It's Oscar, and today we're going to make a magazine. How great is that? I love magazines. Just kidding. I never read them. However, I see them on the shelves all the time. Who reads magazines when you've got the internet? But apparently they still make them a lot. So let's make one. So my first thought here is, what is our process? Uh, and I laid out some ideas for what I think the plan is. And what's great is when you have a plan, you just tick them off and you get to the end. Step one of the plan is planning. Um, so let's make some thumbnails. We'll do some market research. And then we'll get into format and spacing concerns and so on and so forth down the list. Now, I want to start by saying that I have a photo in mind already, which is this one. And uh, it's a photo that I took in photography class as a teaching thing. And it's really an exercise in beautifying stuff that's garbage. So for instance, I think we put some dirt on the nuts. This is some dirt also. And as far as you know, it's some sort of delicious spice, right? See these berries? We picked these golden raspberries right on Lake Washington's campus and put them there. You can eat them. I mean, maybe don't, but I eat them. I don't know if I'll die from it. Who knows? Uh, see this beautiful milk in our berries and cream? Oh, and we have a little uh, bit of it over here. We just got that from the coffee stand. You see this? Is that some sort of delectable spice that you're going to dip stuff in? No, it's straight up cocoa. You don't want to eat that. That's like the worst thing you can possibly eat. They give it to kids on videos to trick them. We also have this candy bar. The literal worst kind of food you can eat uh, to poison your body. It is shelf stable forever. You'll find a Snickers from five years ago. It's the same as this Snickers right now. Uh, there's like nothing holistic or good in it. And yet, through the magic of graphic design, we can trick people into thinking that it is related to these healthy foods. By the way, this is black lapsang souchong tea. What does that have to do with anything? See these plants over here? See that plant there? Those aren't edible. We just picked them out on the woods and stuck them in there. Now it looks beautiful, even though it could be poison. However, there's still lots to go off of this plate as far as magazines are concerned. For one thing, what is up with this red stripe on the side? It, first off, automatically says $2 IKEA towels. Uh, you probably have 50 of them in your house. You'll see them at restaurants. Also, I didn't even get a clean one. Look at this. Oh, it's filthy. It's disgusting. How can we use the power of Photoshop to level that out to separate it? I don't know yet, but I bet we'll figure it out. So really quick, I wanted to share one form of image editing before we get into this, which is how did I bring this over? Well, I have this available in Lightroom. And what's cool is I think this has the food keyword. So when I need to make a food project, if you have a robust photo library that you've been tagging yourself throughout history, you can just do something like search food and look, a bunch of food photos come up. And then you can just pick one that you like and go with it. Same thing for family, so on and so forth. When I needed to make Christmas cards, I'll just search for all my family pictures and I got them right there, ready to go. So let's get to work on making this into a magazine. First off, let's talk about Lightroom. If I have this in Lightroom, why would you maybe do your edits in Lightroom instead of Photoshop? Well, the reason is simple and that is that that is because in Lightroom you can make these edits non-destructively. So in Photoshop, when I do something like take a big brush and I go blah, 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 and I save that, it permanently writes that to the file. In Lightroom, when you do that, and sometimes Photoshop does this, they're a little better at it nowadays. In Lightroom, if I did something like go to the develop tab and where are you develop? That's the menu I wanna. So if I go to the develop tab, I could mess with a lot of stuff right off the bat. What is that like extra flash right there? That could improve this. I could do something like uh, adjust the colors, the texture. The clarity. Ugh. Now it looks like a band photo. The dehaze, so on and so forth. Now when I do this in Lightroom, I can also uh, select specific colors. So let's say I want these blueberries to be real freaking blue. And real, eh, probably the right light. 
What if I want my greens to pop? I could select my green tab and I could first off modify them to be more green, more saturated. What about my orangey poos? What if I wanted these to actually be raspberries? Look at that, I can cheat. Now this is applying it to an image wide amount, but I can also use other tools in here. Anyways, it's just something that you should know because in Lightroom, when you make these edits, it's the same thing as you would do in Photoshop. But all that happens is it puts a little chunk of metadata called an XMP file next to the file. And when Lightroom loads, it looks at both this, the preview files generated by Lightroom, and the XMP data to create the illusion that you made these changes. And it just goes on top of the image. The benefit of this is that it's non-destructive, and in a lot of cases, you can then compound this by right-clicking, uh, develop settings, copy settings, and paste settings. So if you needed to make these edits on 50 images, don't do it in Photoshop. And oftentimes that's how a photo shoot is, is you shoot the same setup 50 times, 100 times, with the same lighting and the same actor doing the same thing but slightly different. And then you can adjust all those all at once. So it's kind of handy. So I got this image. And let's stick to the plan though. Let's do some market research. Well, I'm doing a cooking magazine. So what's a cooking magazine? I don't know. Uh, Cooks Illustrated. Let's look at some of their color covers. What about just Googling this? What a terrible choice. Why am I using Google? It's terrible. Use Bing. Oh yeah, that's way better. Now we have some semblance of what we're looking at. You got some uh, white space over here for your text. You got an image over here. That's a nice one. Let's just copy it and paste it in. Not that we'll use it, not that it's our intellectual property, but perhaps we can use it later. In fact, I like to make these super duper tiny because then I'm forced to think about it in thumbnail sensibilities. And as a result, I tend to uh, I tend to crib less and improv more. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Cooks Illustrated. Oh yeah, Cooks Illustrated. Look at that, big image, text. What's great is if you do this sort of market research long enough, you actually don't need to do it anymore. You just know right off the bat how magazines are laid out. You know where the big text goes, where the little text goes. You might even know their fonts. Uh, you might know that certain magazines tend to have like a border or a dark uh, palette or a light palette. So for instance, when I Google or when I look up cooking magazine, let's go back one. I just have looked at cooking magazines so much and have thought about what makes beautiful food long enough that I know about this trick, which is the top down shot. You shoot your food straight down and it looks like a graphic design puzzle. And sudden, suddenly it's great. So if you look through here, you'll notice a bunch of them pulling that. Like the pizza, it's either, uh, the other one is the exact orthographic shot where you shoot the hamburger from the side and therefore it looks real big. Food from the front or top, food from the top. Uh, I guess sometimes they do have a right angle, but I hate that. So we got some market research. Let's grab some more of these. That one's on the side. I want one that has that sort of, uh, there's a lot of cooking magazines like, or movies like Tortilla Soup that use this sort of design look that this has, where it's like spread out. Maybe it's going to be over there. And let's think through our, our reference, by the way. We have a, a largely white image, and so let's figure out like, who also show, shot their food on a white tablecloth. I think your photo logic is that you shoot uh, light stuff on a dark background or dark stuff on a, on a light background. 
That way, whatever the food is pops out. And my goodness, what a time to be alive. Look at all this market research. You can just keep going and going and going. They have to pump these out and they have to pulp them at the end of the month. They take all the ones that didn't sell and then just stick them in a trash compactor, mash them up with chemicals, turn them back into paper and print the next pile of magazines on it. So this one's pretty close. There we go. Oh, I just lost it. Oh no, was it up or down? I'm starting to get to the point where uh, I've mentioned this in the past, which is you almost need to like set yourself a time limit for, yeah. you have to set yourself a time limit for how much time you spend researching because otherwise you'll just research over and over and over and you'll never actually get to making the thing. Do it. I'm gonna give myself one more minute. I'm gonna cut off. <sighs> Vertical food from the side. It always works. Oh, where did it go? It was such a nice layout. It was like a charcuterie board. I just clicked a little bit wrong. All right. We're starting to get into anime results, which usually is a sign that you should stop going through the Google image results or the Bing image results because you're about to face an unhappy surprise, I bet. So let's call it there. That's enough. We'll copy this one. We got a nice charcuterie board. And look. All our reference images. All in one go. So, we can think through this. Uh, I'm gonna, what is this giant thumbnail? Gross. So. Let's just uh, you know think through this. I don't know. Where do you think this stuff's gonna go? So I think based on this, it's gonna be like cooking. I'm gonna use my Wacom tablet. Cooking stuff. Let's look at our big lead in. The big star, big star. Little stories, little stories. Other story. And I really like this where, I mean, you know, I think this was a mistake. That's that's going a little too far. I would leave this white space alone. Like it just feels cramped at that point. Feels like a weird intersection, uh, but I do love when you have like uh, fine cooking is doing this. And culture does it too. Um, when you have some sort of text hidden up at the top, so maybe we'll do that. Maybe it's like one giant C, and here's like the secret story. And over here, all that crap. Maybe a candy bar. Maybe I want to try a version where I flip it. What do you like better? Cooking stuff and text over here. We're cooking stuff in a big thing. I think, and I'm looking at my reference here, I think I prefer when it goes to the side because I think that gives us an opportunity for like this sort of snake-like pattern. And I think we can work on it. Maybe get one story over here even. 
Maybe that's not it. But I think like the design of this stuff will work. But we don't really know until we throw that plate in there. So, what's next? We got some planning, we got some thumbnails, we got some market research. Let's get our format and spacing concerns all figured out. I'm going to go over to this photo and I'm gonna start by going to filter, camera raw filter. Camera raw filter is one that I use a lot and there's a couple of reasons. Even if you're using a shitty JPEG, um, it still will act like a camera. So if you're using photo references, it's the closest you can get to a camera-like accurate transform. Whereas when you use levels and stuff, this has nothing to do with reality. It's a more arbitrary um, pixel-based sensibility. So when you use camera raw, it tries to jam it into a natural transform. Oh, that's not what I want. That will try and you know maintain some of this stuff. So you'll notice that I have a lot of that same feel from Photoshop or from Lightroom, where I can up the texture, the clarity. Actually, like lowering the clarity. Ugh, no. This is uh, all those horrible, like uh, child beauty pageant looks. More haze, less haze. I think upping the haze and also the exposure is probably the best. I can then go into things like the curves, like do the classic I'm an idiot curve, which is usually you uh, bring the highlights up and you bring the darks down. Look, it's 2004 again. Everyone's doing it. This is the detail. Why not crank it all around and see what you like? So much detail. And again, you can go into here and you can adjust colors individually. And I think that's really powerful. And like the amount of stuff in here is really powerful. So, you know, if you just get tired of going image adjustments, levels, image adjustments, curves, followed by image adjustments, hue saturation, and you get tired of how those are like separate and you want a more holistic all at once vibe, I would really recommend this. Anyways, I'm gonna copy this image. This is pretty good now. I'm gonna paste it over here. And start playing with composition. Actually, I'm going to instead I think if I move this over here and I drag and drop it. Yeah, sure. We'll change it. We can now have that as a smart object. Nope, that's different. Whatever. You betrayed me for the last time, Photoshop. That's not true. I'll always go back to this old bag. Now, what's cool is this was, you know, just arbitrarily shot so I can right click flip horizontal flip vertical that's what I want so I think I want some of this stuff I think I gotta turn off my reference. And now we're in that stage where you just kind of move it around until you like it. Something like that. Nah, something like that. I 
we'll go with that. Consult the divine reference. See, I want something where I get a little bit of that overlap. But I don't want to like totally overblow it. And we have this like white element right there. Yeah, I think that's what I want. So my logic for this composition is number one, this white uh, container of cream is gonna interact weird with the white of the tablecloth going up. Although I think I'm gonna make this do a fake tablecloth. And also these blueberries can now go kind of in this text, if that makes sense. And the blueberries are kind of the prettiest thing, so I want them there. So next up, let's get some placeholder text in. Text. Let's go in and just grab a bunch of fonts. What's the tastiest looking font? That's pretty tasty. Oh yeah, I was gonna say regarding format earlier, but it slipped my mind, is that you should figure out your safe area. Probably one that's like pre-made, but I'm gonna get, like try and have a half inch on each side. I got the rulers up with control R. Oh yeah, let's put Karnak up. And while pulling this ruler out, I can hold shift and it will snap to the ruler, thereby allowing me to get it to the exact right spot. Photoshop, why do you do this to me? So now I know like generally where I'm going. So, it's got cooking stuff there. Cool. Next up, let's get some more placeholder text in. Again, in our reference, they've got fine stories such as holiday pork roast as opposed to everyday pork roast blank snake taco you know I just I can't stand it but magazines they have to have like five different fonts but we're gonna roll with that I heavily dislike this as well by the way the the uh, framing it to the side but I guess they have something of a border there I think I want to go with this, where it's more, it's more classy. It's more all centered. However, we are going to do the hideous five font thing. I want to do one other thing. I'm going to have a swash. I take this first letter and make it really huge. And I'm also going to go into my text tool. You can find these under window, paragraph style. I don't even know which one it is. No, window pair. Window character, that's it. And these various attributes move the text around in such a way that you can have fun with it. So I'm gonna lower this and I'm also going to increase the overall size, but also the kerning to its neighbor. 
Turning is the space in between your letters. And I like doing this just far enough that maybe they're not touching. Cool. And now we have to add some sort of text. But it's nice to have like a sense of safety here. So I'm gonna go like that. I think I'm gonna end up separating these food elements into separate layers so that I can move them around. And then they won't be touching each other. It'll be great. But just all this layout stuff can take a lot of work too. All right, so now we have to have five different fonts. Let's just choose them at random. Oh, and this is the big one first. Uh, uh. Mm. Oh, let's see what they do. Just cheat. Look at other people. Market research. Italian. Ooh, Italian Christmas cookie. Look at that German crap. Leaks. Take a fresh look. So, all right, I'm feeling inspired now. Picnics! And this is gonna be italic. What about picnics? Not just for jerks. Select our next font, and I'm going to lower its size until it fits. Just put tildes in between stuff. I don't know if that's what you should do or not, but it's what they do on other magazines. Beefy surprise. Old country. Old country. Uh, soup. That sounds like something that you'd find in a recipe. I'm going to increase this a little bit. Go out on safe margins a little too. And I'm going to keep copying this. I'm at least going to keep my tildes. Uh, how about something like that provokes fear? People love that. Jarred spaghetti. The unknown risks. Now yeah, that's too boring. We'll uh, Unknown dangers. And here's the trick. They think they're going in for a spaghetti sauce article, but actually it's just a giant product placement for spaghetti sauce. You know, I love graphic design. At least in college I love it. Because you know what? You can do all sorts of things. Uh, 
this. Yeah, that tilt is bugging me now. I just want to leave it as white space. Corns, come back. We love you, corn. You don't have to do a food magazine. You don't have to do a real magazine. You don't have to do a serious magazine. However, a savvy student would probably try and make something that they can work up into a portfolio piece. Or you can just have fun. We need a love font for this. What font says love? Oh, there we are. And I'm going to go over here. So again, these type tools you know, the best way to learn them, let's be honest, you grab them and you crank them back and forth. Eventually you figure out what to do. What? Your birth sign says about spiciness. People really buy these magazines for baking, because that's like cooking that you technically do, but you, know, you don't have to watch it. You just dump a bunch of shit in a bowl and then it, you know, it comes out. So uh, the bakers love magazines, let me tell you. Um, of course, if you are a baker, I don't mean to impugn your baking skills. This should be, you know, I feel like when you talk about birth signs, you're actually trying to appeal to their sense of, you know, like your first hurdle is like convincing them that this is true. So based on that, I think it needs a very serious font. Also, I think picking your screen needs to be bigger. So, some sort of baking thing. Homemade. Uh, Homemade. Uh, I don't know. You take one food and you combine it with another food. It's an instantly a new food. It's sort of buzzword that'll get people to buy something. So how about homemade uh, quinoa bread? <laughs> And then we're going to make this bold and big. Uh, how about uh, vegan friends? Tips on being passive aggressive. Hmm. 
Nah, that's mean. I don't want to vegan shame. Although in this case, I'm shaming people who vegan shame. But they too need love. So, vegan friends, they're, they're actually really cool. How about that? Yeah. Let's just close our eyes and pick fun at random. Ooh. Yeah, that is cool. Randomness was the right choice. And as for this one, never guess the font I choose. What? Well, because I won't guess it either. Wow, that font also was perfect. I increasingly rely on this sensibility in which. In which I let, you know, I let postmodern thoughts enter my mind by just pointing at random and, you know, sometimes you go with it. And then how about one more? I have decided I do like the tilde. Somebody inspire me. You are alive again. That's the power of shrimp tacos. We're going to tell the audience that these shrimp tacos will bring them life. That's how good they are. Now don't you want to eat it? Unless of course you have a shellfish allergy. That it probably doesn't work. I feel like this font for the shrimp tacos second one should be like, yeah, like that. Like an eat, pray, love font. You know. All right, so I got a bunch of things on my magazine cover. Now I need to fix this hideous uh, picture that's like all wonky. I'm gonna start by getting all this text into one document. Actually, this is my notes. So let's put this in a group. I'm gonna call it uh, pre-production. This I'll put in a folder called text. Texty, sure. All right, let's do something about this image. Number one, what can we do to fix it? Uh, I feel like I want to clean that stain up, and maybe I can go so far as to like totally separate it out and put a gingham like picnic table behind it. Who knows if that's even possible? Let's try it. Image. Let's start with our channel selection. That's always where I go. In times of need, return to your channels. And you know, I think what I'm gonna do is So I wanted to start with channels because a lot of this dirt, I mean, flavoring, like, you know, this is what I love about food photography more than anything. So it's an exercise in lying. Like we're, uh, we're taking this food that is technically inedible. If you served this at a restaurant, you get uh, arrested. And yet 
Through the power of design, we can trick the audience into thinking it's real. So I'm gonna start with the mask of everything. And then I'm gonna round that out with some object selections uh, of stuff that is obviously gonna be the big problem. So this milk carton or this milk vase is probably the real danger because it's so close in value and it has areas that go in and out of value. Same thing with this. Like the highlight is light, the thing is dark. And this little ramekin is also dark. I always bring ramekins when, uh, when it's food day. And allow me to tell you why. Because ramekins always look beautiful. And we all love them. So now I'm going to use the pen tool. And actually, maybe I'll just use the. I'm going to switch to the it up a little. I'm going to switch to the mask tool. What if I just use a big old smudge brush? I think that's what I like about this method is I can just overdo it and then pull it back a little. It's really like the purpose of Photoshop and like you don't understand why until you do a lot of it. Like the real skill in Photoshop for me is who can make the best selections. I feel like this is just such a nice easy. I always like anything that's more brush oriented. So, something about this is soothing. So, what are you going to do for your photos? What are you going to do for your magazine? Uh, you know, whatever you like. No pressure. You want to make a magazine about cars? Cool. You want to just grab images off the internet? That's fine. It's more of an exercise in typography and layout.
some of these are so far out that it doesn't make as much sense. I can just control click. back to the smudge too. But these round circles, it's just so nice. <laughs> you know that's pretty cool let's take this and apply this mask now I got these nice foods separated That's pretty good. I mean, the candy bars, these. I think that's it. Far out. Now we can do a little bit of extra stuff, such as maybe get rid of this little mask. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. Shift L. We get rid of that telling. unsightly red stripe the text. So now what's cool is like some of this stuff I don't know, maybe it's more movable. going to separate the blueberries because I think they need a little more custom touch. And I also want to make 
sure I got this shadow. That's kind of nice. This is the third layer. I'm going to copy this part of the mask and paste it over here. Hopefully that works. Duplicate this layer. On this one, select everything that's not that mask. Delete it. That's fine with black. Selecting that one. And doing that. It's always a puzzle. So I started with the shadow one and then added the other stuff. Now this moves around a little easier. Letting me do something like put it over here. Having done that, I think the next thing is I just have to subtract all this other crap out. From my blueberry layer. So that lets me do a couple things. Number one, I can move these down. Impunity. And number two, I can take this blueberry layer. And move it over here. What about this other stuff? Well, some of the shadow stuff almost certainly will have to get cut out and changed into. Changed into its own thing. Sorry, I'm starting to fade. I'm uh, going on very little sleep right now. And let's just do one cheat. You know what, never mind. We're instead gonna just duplicate this. Put it down to the plus to duplicate it. I'll call this one background. This one is dirt. This one is dishes. And this is blueberries. The blueberries in our, are in a ramekin, which makes anything look fancy. You could put dog food in a ramekin. And people would be like, wow, that's weird. I love it. On this one, I am deleting the mask. Because what we want is this tablecloth texture. So how to get it when we got all this other stuff? Well, I can 
hide it. Let's hide the text too. And the blueberry. Now what if we take this and use the stamp tool or the patch tool. Content to work, Bill. Something like that. If I was real smart, I would just go take a picture of this. Save so much time. But whatever. Control click it, invert my selection, switch to five, content over fill. And you know what? That's looking pretty good. Now if I hide the guides, I think you can find one more thing we need to work on, which is I wanna move some of this stuff around. Or I think we could add some decorative elements or maybe do something like the pen tool gonna make a little swash like this. Now I'm gonna select my brush. I want a brush that's got lots of cool stuff, lots of in and out. Maybe the classic cartoonist. Let's search through the mega box. I want something that's inky but messy. That looks good. I'll now use the arrow tool and on the new layer, right click, stroke path, brush, simulate pressure. Now what if I move that oh yeah. And then I don't know, maybe like One new layer, stamp tool. I'm gonna switch to the stamp tool and I want this to sample all layers. 
Which I don't even remember how to do. Usually it's like over here. All oh, there's there. Which means that on this new layer, I just control stick on like that. Just uh, use a painterly touch and start just get a really textured one on. Yeah, it's pretty good. If you turned this in, I would give you an A. But if you turned in something far worse, I'd probably still give you an A. Because, you know. It's that kind of quarter, am I right? Cool. Cooking stuff. Now, for all this text, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Adjustment. Maybe a Let's do a solid color. Look at that blueberry color. But what's this? Clipping mask it. Psh, instant blue text. Also, I probably have to put my swash in the text as well. Need to have it below this. So instead, I'm going to lock pixels on that layer and select that color. And I'll just fill it with that. Hey, I'm ready to eat. How about you? And then, of course, you just throw a bunch of LUTs and filters and stuff on top of this thing. Why not throw some? The gradient on here. Why not? We're trying to bring out that, you know, blueberry. How about more blueberry to less blueberry? And then we set it to some sort of Actually, maybe I want pinks and purples. Wow, I hate this. Now it looks like a uh, Hatchimals toy. Yeah, let's leave it there. That sounds great. Cool. Save and quit. Hope this gives you some thoughts on how to make a magazine. Goodbye.